Let's talk about Smash 4. Talking about Smash 4. We're getting right in here. We got Mook versus Jason. Ooh, Mook versus Jason is going to be a really fun match. Uh, I thought that we'd maybe be seeing a Fox Ditto, but instead from Mook, we're going to be seeing that Pikachu. And it, it also makes, I think, more sense, especially given the style of Fox that Jason plays. Very tempo-oriented and very aggressive to the point where it's so tough, especially in Ditto's. I think whoever establishes that tempo first usually comes out on top. Yes. And uh, and when you think about a fox like Jason's, like it's gonna get tempo first. It's just how it is. Yeah, I, I totally agree there. And I think Pikachu is not a bad matchup. Both of these characters really thrive off of their tilts uh, in the early percents. So I think once Mook starts that tilt, starts his combo game, it's gonna be looking a lot better for him. But right now, Jason's taking a very commanding. Uh, First stock so far, 65% yeah. on move, 29 on him now. Um, whoa, almost gets sniped. Yeah, and, you know, and it was really unorthodox for Jason to start that Firefox right there. Mm -hmm. it, it was like the least likely thing that he could possibly do, but it was the exact thing that he needed to do, given what Mook was trying to cover. Yes. That drop down Firefox would have gotten would have gotten snagged by that forward air, but that unorthodox play ends up actually saving Jason. Exactly. What I what I think is really going to thrive for both of these characters is whoever gets that kill first. And once they start working on that second stock, I think it's going to be really important how they play after that. Like, how how after that first stock is gone, oh, great, down air to up smash. After that first stock is gone, how they play is really going to matter. So now we're going to see how Jason plays. If he's going to still play incredibly aggressive, he's going to slow it down, and he's going to rack up percent. Or if Mook's going to be able to set off the stock and have a fresh uh, one stock for both. And that's what it's going to look like for Smash. He's going to be able to get back. He's going to be able to use that Firefox here. Ooh, you saw Mook trying to go for that back air, but he didn't space it properly. If he was yes. further off of the edge, it would have been able to connect. But instead, the belly of Pikachu gets hit by that Firefox, and Jason once again making it back. Exactly. So Fox in this game has an incredible recovery. He the, really does. The fact that you can, you know, do the side B and then up B after it is incredible. But on top of that, Fox's up B can go all the way from the bottom blast zone all the way back up to the stage. It's intense. It's intense. It's just like, what if we took a good, like a great recovery and just made it better? Made it even better. Now, and... <laughs> but think about some of the things he, he lost in the process, right? He's a really light character in this iteration of yes. Smash. And because of that, Mook is seriously like, he could sneeze on Fox at this point and could probably get the KO. Getting that grab into the back throw, trying to set up once again for an edge guard. Jason being so, so unorthodox. That time ends up being a little bit textbook, and Mook snags him so perfectly with that forward air. Great stuff from Mook there. It's, so this is going to be the breaking point. If Mook is able to start building up that percent, he's good. But if, you know, Jason just gets another down throw into up B, I mean, not up B, up smash, it's going to be just as bad. And going in the game two, Mook's going to have to work twice as hard. Yeah, that's twice, enough, twice in a row now that Jason's actually jumped to avoid the follow-up from Mook after that throw connect. So maybe he's going to be using that uh, information in game two because he cannot use that in game one. <laughs> uh, that is so yeah. So Luke started to come back there again. He was able to get his tilts. He was able to start his strings, and it was looking really, really good for him. Um, what I think he can probably adjust the second game is Jason was dictating the face of that game entirely. He was getting in, and he was starting his string of combos. But it looks like Luke wants to show up. Yeah. He's going to do this box ditto. I'm interested. You know, I was going to say maybe for Mook he could use more up tilts because that would be great anti-air options exactly. that could deal with some of Jason's aerial pressure very well. But instead we're going to be seeing that Fox Ditto. Like we said, Jason really good at establishing tempo really quickly, especially when, when he's hot, he is hot. And especially coming off of a win, you know he's really feeling it. Yes. Oh, man. Those sub tilts. Yeah, and it looks like at early percents, um, Fox is a faster faller. He's not able to get those tilts, as many tilts. Um, and he'll fall to the ground a bit faster. So I think at higher percents, like what is like 20 and up, uh, the up tilt starts to combo into itself. Yeah, once again, Shield is going to be really powerful in this matchup. Both of these characters uh, not necessarily possessing the best options off of grabs. Really, more than anything else, they're going to use it just to secure a little bit of stage control and then try to set up for some edge guards. I know both these boxes are really even. I'm seeing the continuous string of jabs from both uh, Jason and Mook right now. Uh, what's going to be important is if they're able to get into their setups, and if it's possible for Fox to be eye out of those setups against Fox. I've never actually seen uh, Fox and Fox before, so I'm really interested to see how their combos work. Nice. But I know how reads work, and that's what Mook just did. Read that yeah. air dodge right into the up smash. No, nah, man, he, I, I feel like he almost just like kind of waited and baited it out. You know, it, it, and again, it all comes down to, to Temple more than anything else. Uh, Jason, we've seen so many times use really defensive options, be it either a jump or an air dodge. 
And because of that, Mook was like, you know what? I'm just going to wait, see which option it is. If he jumps, I'm still in a good place to punish as he's falling down. If he air dodges, I got this punish in the bag. Nice from Jason answering right back. Up tilt up air. Bringing this down to one stock apiece. 33%. That's the only difference right now between these two players. And we've seen at low percents, they can absolutely decimate these stocks. What I like to see is how they interact with each other off stage. Because Fox is a pretty easily, easily gippable character when he's uh, in his Firefox. So I want to see if they, when they get their... Um, actually, they haven't really been off stage as much as I would expect them to. Yeah, they're definitely playing it very much on the stage. Playing neutral as best as they possibly can. We haven't seen things go to the edge. And oh my god, that up smash was right to the edge of the blast zone. Jason's in a rough spot, makes it back somehow. I'm surprised Nathan not to go down and go for the, like, the back air or something. Yeah, else. he was probably counting on a non-sweet spot of recovery, but especially from that angle, uh, there aren't too many, I guess, angles in theory that you could really punish. Shields. I love that shield stop option. It's just like a really nice mind game, and it also prevents you from overly aggressing with like an air, with an attack that whips on a shield and then giving your opponent a chance to really try to mount and come back. I love how Mook's playing right now. He's not, you know, overly committing with any option. He's still playing really safe options that won't get him punished in return. And I feel like a lot of, you know, players, when they see someone at really high percents like when Jason's at right now, they start throwing out smash attacks, trying to find that kill. Oh, that's why you got to sweet spot those recoveries. He went way too high with that side B. Mook was in the perfect position to plant that down smash. We're yes. going to game number three. We are. I wonder if it's going to be another Fox that or possibly Jason switching up to one of his co-mains. Oh, I mean, who else does he have in his pocket? I think he mainly sticks with Fox, but I think I know he's been working on a Charizard. Now let me see that Ganondorf. <laughs> I know Phenom was playing Ganondorf. He was? I missed Phenom Ganondorf! Yes, he was playing Ganondorf. It was pretty uh it was pretty nice. It was, it was pretty nice. I oh my it. god, yeah. Phenom Ganondorf, too strong. It's it's really good. Way too much. Alright, game number two, Mook versus Jason. Sorry, this game is a, this is game number two of their Fox Theater, game number three of the set overall. Words are hard sometimes. Right, you forget. No, well, I mean, I understand. You completely forget about that first game. He's just an epic Fox Ditto. Yeah, and, and I got to give props to Mookie really showing himself in the Fox Ditto. I didn't, I didn't know that he could actually like put on that kind of a performance against Jason because of how Jason plays. But I think with Mook, he's playing much more smart aggression more than anything else is a little way to, way to say it. Whereas Jason is just go, 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 right? He's got his pedals to the metal the whole time. Yeah, you definitely Mook is, you know, being a bit more cognizant with his play style and <laughs> these jab Super Saiyan fights, though. But he's being a bit more cognizant of his play style. He's not, you know, I know Jason's thinking while he's playing, but Mook's not go, go, go. He's, I'm going to go, I'm going to see how my opponent reacts, and then I'm going to have an option, and then I'm going to keep going. Yeah, he's, he's taking his foot off the gas so he can drift some of those corners, you know? Mm -hmm. It's big. Definitely. We're, we're totally seeing how that is a big point in these box titles because both games, Mook's been pretty commanding. Nah, he's still overall kind of patient on the edge. I thought he using that down smash because he knew if he missed, he'd still have enough time to try to go ahead and punish the other recovery. Oh, man. Jason, he had him in the air for a little bit, but Mook finds himself down. That was so smart. He gets on that platform, runs off, and then uses the back air, catching Jason sleeping. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure what Jason's option was. I think he meant to do like a different option, but he threw out a forward tilt, and that's how he got caught with the back air. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure if that was a technical flub or whatever, but um, that's going to cost him in this game. Wow, Mook is just putting on so much percentage. Look at these oh, up airs, Zans. Goodness, these, <laughs> this up air string. 61%. I think he was at 11 when this yo, started. Uh, yo, Leffen? <laughs> uh, right? Uh, right? Leffen? What? Uh, <laughs> okay, so I, okay, what I really wanted to see there is if he like started throughout a firefox trying to catch him and then kill him off the top. That would have been hype. Oh, yeah. And Mook right there really demonstrated that he's, I think, a lot better at punishing opponents as they're trying to land than Jason is. Notice how much damage he had whenever he had that juggle going compared to Jason, who I think maybe netted 25% uh, on his max punished in the air. Yeah, Mook almost laughing Jason percent. Oh, that's Ooh. unfortunate. Missed oh, the stage, man. fast fall is back here. You that's gotta hate those technical errors. Super unfortunate. Especially on a great set like that. Yes, definitely. Really rough. Uh, great stuff from Mook, making the character change and showing that he does have a very solid fox in the pocket. He's not afraid to bust out. Yeah.